And the Palatho is Damascus still. You can see it. Really? Wow. And this is 600 BC. Hey guys, Cardinal is here again. Last week, this guy, Hayden Paul, introduced us to this man, Jim Gee, a researcher who showed us definitive proof of the Book of Mormon, specifically Lehi's journey through the wilderness via the maps of Nahum and Bethabara. He also illuminated our minds as to why their families didn't need to cook their meat while sojourning through the wilderness. Well, since then I've gotten to know Jim Gee and Hayden better, and he's told me that what he showed me doesn't even scratch the surface of what he's got to show the world. So I decided I had to get back on the jet, head from Santa Monica back to Salt Lake City, grab Kwaku and Brad to go with me to tour his personal collection. And let me tell you, some of the things he's come up with will blow your mind. Get ready. Um, so what are we doing? Okay, well, first we're going to talk about the sort of labor. Oh, no. You got your own sword of Laban? Well, what this is, okay, is uh, a sword from the Crusader period. Okay, that's a thousand years ago. Wait, so this is this physical sword right here is a thousand years old. The blade, okay. not this. This is n relatively new, probably a hundred years old, okay. and this is camel handle. But what I'm going to show you is this blade. Whoa. Whoa. What's different about it? You know something it has these like watermarks on it. If you look on the edge, you can even see them on the edge. Wow. It's the way they was made. It's a high carbon steel. Is it Damascus? And they call it Damascus steel because the Crusaders had it, and that's how they defeated the Europeans because they could. These swords are so strong, you can break the other ones in half. Mm. And remember, when Nephi pulled out the sword of Laban, he said, "Oh, I noticed it was what of the Fine. finest steel." Yeah. He had. He saw something. It wasn't just a blade. He saw these watermarks. Oh. Now, there was a Stanford University professor. Uh, his name doesn't come to my mind right now, but I have it written in my documents. That when he went to the Middle East and saw this Damascus steel, he said, "Oh man, it's so unusual and so neat." He did a study because he was he was a medic. Yeah. So he Metallurgy did a study on finding the history it? of it, and he found out that it w it was first originated and around 600 BC. So it would have been the newest and greatest thing of the time. And of course, Laban would have had it. I need it to defend what? The plates. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If I'm in charge of this and I got 50 guys helping me, they had their steel made out of Damascus as well. That's why, and Nephi was familiar with it because when he pulled it out, he noticed, ooh, this is the new Damascus. They didn't call it Damascus steel, but it had its own name. Mm -hmm. And you can see them. They're very beautiful watermarks. Mm -hmm. Now, these were cut out of the remains of the Crusader swords. So this has not been filed, but it can hold an edge. It's stronger. And to this day, we don't know how they did it exactly. Yeah. We have new Damascus steel, but you'll notice it doesn't look like this. Yeah, they'll it's do an acid the, wash, right? Yeah, and, well, and, also, and, and they pound it the same way. They, they have to get a lot of high carbon content in it, mm -hmm. which can, if you go too far, makes it brittle. But if you ha get the right formula, it's very strong. Wow. And so that's what it would have looked like. Now, of course, this that's has... Beautiful. I was going to say, that's got to be new if it's an no, umbrella, no, right? No, 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 no. This was Crusader period. Umbrella is what? A symbol of protection. They had umbrellas that look like that in medieval times? Of course times? they did. They did don't, in Egyptian don't times. Don't that. <laughs> now, now didn't, you, didn't you ever see the discoveries of King Tut's tomb? Of course, he had an umbrella. It wasn't because he didn't like the sun or had rain, it was a symbol. All emperors had the umbrella as a symbol of protection. I'm protecting you. Oh, wow. And this sword is protecting Islam, which is, a, this just says Allah. Wow. So they were okay. fighting for a cause. Mm -hmm. And this was to remind the warrior. And you'll see them on all of the uh, true crusader swords. Oh, wow. It was made wow. right into it. And you can see the, the, the symbol of protection which was the umbrella. Even Herod Agrippa the first on his coin has an umbrella. I can show you, I have one in there. And you'll see, again, Whoa. it was a very- I never would have guessed. It was a very I, I figured that was a new inscription symbol. from somebody that had just decided no, no, that no, they no, no. like monogram the sword they yeah, found in ancient- People don't understand. Of course, this is written in Arabic and it's just saying all oh, is great. But this was the symbol of protection, the umbrella. 
So this steel, you'd say, is the closest thing that we can now, I have grasp? Found, I have a friend, and he still has it, that's been in many museums, that found one in Jerusalem, okay? Babylonian time, 600 BC. Okay. And it's a sword. Of course, it doesn't look like the Crusaders ones. It comes out straight. I have a picture of it. I unfortunately, don't have it. It's too expensive for me to have. But it's an ancient sword, and it's made of steel. has a beautiful silver hilt instead of gold like Laban's was. Interesting. But silver okay. is what? Stronger than gold. Gold mm. would have been a bad one. It was just decorative for Laban. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you wouldn't want a gold one because it's way too soft. Yeah. But it was silver. And the blade, though, is Damascus steel. You can see it. Really? Wow. And this is 600 BC. So what all the anti women wow. say that steel didn't exist then? We've that's archaeologically... So, that's so stupid. It's yeah. still has been existing. Can I give you names time. of people and you just say that they're stupid? But I will just send them a, re no, a record <laughs> to show <laughs> that, that they're <laughs> stupid. So, because I can show them documentation of, from historians. The Stanford guy, for example. He's yeah. written a lot of them. He's, with a, he's probably the biggest authority on the... Uh, because he's done a lot of research on the Damascus steel. But they've had steel long before that, and they had steel bows long before that. Okay. Wow. I didn't have an example. Is that what that is? This, is? this is a steel bow from the Crusader period. Hey guys, Cardinalis again, and thanks for hanging out with us and Jim Gee. Uh, we've got quite a few of these interviews coming up, and he has quite a few evidences for Lehi and Nephi's journey through the Holy Land and the Arabian Peninsula that we are going to be sharing in a couple of upcoming videos. We're going to make a series out of this. In order for you to better enjoy the series and not miss anything, please consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, if you subscribe, also make sure that you press the alert button to get each one of our videos. I go through the analytics and I see about 41% of you guys have not yet created accounts, so you're not seeing all of the videos that we drop. Also, if you really like our content, please consider contributing to the channel through the Venmo link that is in the description. You can find us at Midnight Mormons through Venmo if you would like to contribute. Again, we know in this attention economy, there's many other channels that you could be spending time with, yet here you are choosing to spend this time with us. We are grateful and we thank you. Until next time, see you in the next program.